In this video, we'll introduce the idea of separation of variables. We'll introduce this informally now, then come back to it in a later video to describe why it works. Let's look at this through the lens of a specific example. And let's start by asking, why can't we just integrate both sides of this equality and solve this differential equation that way? Well, if you integrate both sides of this equality, you get this integral, and then you can't proceed. Y is an unknown function of X. And without knowing what Y is, we have no hope of computing this integral. But until we compute this integral, we don't know what y is. So we fall into that circular situation. Separation of variables is a technique for increasing the number of differential equations that we can solve using integration. Just blundering in and integrating both sides didn't help here, but maybe we can massage the equation a little so that integration becomes a valid solution technique. And the very first step we're about to perform is a bad step that we shouldn't do. In calculus, when you see this notation first introduced, you have it drilled into you that this is not a fraction. It looks like a fraction, but it is a single concrete piece of notation. And the very first thing we're going to do is to shrug our shoulders and say, well, what if it were a fraction though? If this were a fraction, we could multiply both sides of this equality by the denominator. And you have two variables, x and y. y is a function, but another way of thinking of that is that y is a dependent variable. And this name, separation of variables, comes from the idea that we're going to get our y's on one side of the equation and our x's on the other. We're going to separate them out. So we'll divide both sides of this equality by y.
And now we're going to add integral signs to the left and to the right. We are going to integrate both sides of this equality. And again, it's not really clear what we're doing here in a formal kind of way. So if we multiplied both sides of this equality by dx, we're treating dy and dx kind of like real numbers. But when you see something like one over y dy, dy isn't a number or anything like that. It's just an abstract symbol telling you what variable you're integrating with respect to. So all very suspicious, but let's continue. This integral we can take, it's the natural log of the absolute value plus c. This integral we can take, it's negative 3x squared plus d. This constant of integration and this constant of integration can be combined together. And if we now take the exponential of both sides of this equality, on the left, the exponential and the natural logarithm cancel out. On the right, the exponential of this sum can be rewritten as the product of exponentials. And now we're going to get rid of this absolute value sign. And let's think how we're going to do that. Y can be positive or negative. I mean, if you look at this differential equation, there's nothing in it that would fo force Y to be positive. Getting rid of this absolute value sign puts a plus or minus sign in front of this expression. See, the exponentials are both always positive. So this positive quantity equals this positive quantity. Now that we're letting this be positive or negative, we have to let this be positive or negative. And the way we're going to do that 
is we're going to take the exponential of e, which is an arbitrary positive constant. And we'll replace it with f, a truly arbitrary constant. can be positive or negative. And here we claim is why. Do we believe that? We did all of these suspicious things, multiplying both sides of this equality by dx was suspicious. Here, where dy and dx stopped being quantities and turned into abstract symbols telling you what your variables are. That's suspicious. We did many suspicious things here. And yet, the derivative of y with respect to x equals from the chain rule, we get the derivative of this, negative 6x. And then this expression, this is y. So, in spite of all the dubious things we did, this technique got us to a real solution. Let's summarize. Separation of variables. So you have some differential equation and on the right you have your dependent and independent variables mixed together. Treating dy dx as a fraction, even though we know we shouldn't. Take the dx to the right hand side. And now separation of variables may or may not work depending on what this function is. The next step is to solve so that your y's are over here with your dy and your x's are over here with your dx. And if you can do that, integrate both 
sides of the expression. We will have more to say about this technique shortly.